So yeah, short lived. Uh, so there's no uh, there's no rank for assassins coming out. But yeah, speaking of Diana, these two teams matched up on assassins mode day number two, and Plugo got absolutely demolished. It was by it was it. brutal, is what it was. Yeah, I don't think we can show it again. It's like it's like R rated, right? Yeah, uh, it, it is also important to point out that Plugo was one of the few mid laners to run LeBlanc mid. The thing is, is LeBlanc hasn't had the greatest numbers put up because more often than not, she's actually been seeing play in the support position rather than the mid lane position. And of course, it doesn't help when Saros takes Diana and just bodies you when you pick it. Yeah, well, fortunately, uh, Plugo is adopting a strategy that I like to call, uh, if you can't beat it, pick it. Uh, it's blind, so we can always see a Diana on Diana, Diana matchup. But maybe the LGL have something a little different up their sleeves this time around. We've seen Tussle lock in the Kha'Zix and Evie lock in the Pantheon. No surprises. This is exactly what they went with last time around. I think I can hear Vettius from across the stadium as he looks at Nocturne and just loses it. Uh, he is a big Nocturne proponent, and it is now being hovered by Saras in that mid lane. We've seen Nocturne already. It was uh, a bit hit or miss in an AD carry. We haven't seen it position. in the mid lane. That's true, we haven't. <laughs> But, uh, you know, what? what is the mid lane in Assassin's But I feel like there's going to be a lot of free roaming no matter what. Still no Talon, so I'm upset, but that's okay. I'm sure we'll still be in for an explosive match. See, it's the next evolution. Mithy was talking about how because this is blind pick and they can't see what each other are picking, you know, it, it comes down to this gamble of, do I take Diana? Do I then assume that someone's going to blind pick the Cassidy? Do I blind pick the Cassidy, thinking that it's going to be the Diana before I can get the counter matchup? And Saros is like, no, 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 no. We're going to go one step further, and we're going to go Nocturne mid. There we go, and he's gonna lock it at the end of it all. Players will soon see what they're up against. Uh, no surprises with a couple of LeBlancs, a couple of Aries, slightly different positions. I didn't expect it to be going top for Heliar. Yeah, that is interesting. It could just be what Heliar is comfortable with. Again, something that we don't often talk about coming into Assassin mode is, you know, not all of these positions and these roles actually play Assassin. So, like, what's good? What's this good champ? I'm gonna I try think it's this. more of like Heliar's like, when have I ever filled mid? What did I play in Ari? I can play Ari. We guys. played a Kali last time, and it was like, what? But you know. Uh, the Ari will see if you know how it comes up big against the Pantheon. They've taken a Pantheon support for themselves. So. And which build it's going to be? We've seen a lot That's of uh, mixed damage Ari's coming Trinity through. Trinity Force. No. We saw it once. Definitely going to put the. I axe don't think in that it one. won. But that's okay. There'll be a lot of axes flying. All right, guys. It, once again, it's time to vote at LOL Esports is the place. If you think Latin America South is going to keep this going and take a 2-0 victory on the match, propel themselves into the finals, hashtag LAS win. Or if you think the LGL has still got some fight in them, hashtag JPN win is your cue. Team Ice, Team Fire, going at it on the rift. This semifinal to determine who's going to make it all the way to the end is about to begin. So let's start theory crafting the assassin mode meta and the limited six games or so that we've had with it. I think it's all about the first gank. I think that the reason why we continuously see Kha'Zix mirror matches and why Kha'Zix between Shaco, Rengar, and Nocturne has defined himself as the best jungler in this mid lane, or excuse me, in this uh, mode, is because he has the strongest initial level, you know, pre six ganks. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when you're with a, a bunch of assassins, whoever beats first to that punch, you automatically get a, a massive pressure advantage on that side of the map, and you get that first gank off, you pick up the, the dude who you ganked for, and you just start destroying all the other lanes and dreams. I think globals is really important, too, though, when you think about it. This is why Pantheon's been such a big presence, because of the Grand Skyfall. Minions and we're seeing fallen. only one TP on the LGL side. I love you, Pyra, but no one is picking Pantheon because of his Grand Skyfall. I like him because of Grand Skyfall. Everyone is picking Pantheon because of his targetable CC, <laughs> his stun. It's one of the easiest to land out okay, of the champions available. Too. They're like, ah, oh, yes, Pantheon, because of the AoE five, 15 minute drop. <laughs> All the same, there's mobility on that side. Uh, and on the other hand, Latin America <laughs> South, they've got two TPs, remember. But that means they've given up some ignites. They might lose out in 1v1 trades. Speaking of uh, mobility, this is kind of curious. Dara. He just came to watch. Well, it was uh, very smart from Kletos as well to pull it into the brush and make sure that none of these cute shenanigans could have happened because he didn't see LeBlanc in the bottom lane. Yeah. But I quickly want to touch on Saros with the, the mid lane Nocturne pick. This is the first time that we've seen it in the Assassin mode. And what's really cool about Nocturne in particular on this mode is that no one is building Sightstone. Again, we, we technically have theoretical supports in the game, but the vision game has fundamentally changed. Because again, you can't build any defensive items. So when you think of a champ who can abuse lack of vision, well, he goes to the top of the list pretty quickly. But Wara is taking him on to swap towards the mid lane in lieu of Plugo. And I kind of like this. It's like. It's like each each squad's strongest warrior steps up to the plate. Uh, there's definitely going to be advantage for any time a LeBlanc steps into the mid lane, yeah. however. Nice charm, orb. We're the ones who deceived. Dara takes the damage there. 
Yeah, I, I like this, especially because they basically have two mid laners. Wara was a mid laner and roll swapped, and we've seen that that's worked out quite well for him, so clearly he can go back to those roots. Let's take a look at our summoners. That is a Courage of the Colossus Diana. It's pretty clear what Plugo's got in mind for himself. He's also going to be absorbing a lot of the pressure from Evie, so uh, if we're looking at you know, war as being the mechanical god of Latin America South. Uh, we talk all the time about Saros, but kind of who didn't shine last game, but who shown in the first time there was a 5v5 was Evie on his Tom Kench. So this time around on the Pantheon, facing across from Plugo, you can already see that this is a bit of a volatile matchup. Just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> Wara just keeps on going, and Saros actually couldn't this get the special time. There's a lot of minions here. Saros could be in trouble. He's got a Nama Biscuit. I'm really surprised that Ward didn't try to punish that at least with a few more autos. Certainly respecting the fact that he doesn't have eyes on three members, and you can see that this is about to be a party in mid. Uh-oh. LeBlanc, Kha'Zix coming on in, and Wara, he's healthy enough, and he has the jump on him to get away. He looks very much in his element on this LeBlanc, though. Ultimately, though, that just alleviates pressure from Saros's Nocturne, but he's still falling behind. Yeah. Well, Wara was definitely the much more comfortable player the last time the Assassin mode came around in among all of For his team. the Latin America South players. I, I want to add that caveat. He was the only one that had a scoreline that looked relatively positive. But, uh, I mean, that was a very big dominating game. This game looks to start out a lot different as Dara comes back and joins Heredi in the bot side up against Bear. Charm lands, max range. Oh, they got the damage, and they turn on Heliore. We can see first blood right here. Dara's going to back out, and they play the control game. And you can see what Dara's trying to do with his distortion and replacing himself. He's trying to dodge out on Heartseeker Strike. So kind of some cute sidestepping, but ultimately while he's doing all that juking, he's still taking a ton of damage, especially from the creeps as well as the ignite. Speaking of, top. of damage, Plugo's got to burn that flash, and they finish him off. The Void Spikes tussle picks up first blood. Aw, oh, disaster for Latin America South, because now, of course, this unlocks Evie. Meanwhile, mid. Yeah, they're going to try to turn for Saros, so Kha'Zix is already coming up big, but Saros is able to flash away before any more damage is dealt, and they burn summoners across the board down there. In the end, though, still out of uh, advantage to Japan. So now it's a question. What will Tussle and Evie do to continue to exploit this advantage that they've created? And can Plugo continue to hang on? Unfortunately, he loses a ton, not only going down his first blood, but the fact that his teleport had been burned, and he has to walk all the way up towards that top lane. He's sitting at, what, 19 CS to 28. So Evie building a very healthy lead. I was about to be like, what are you talking about? He's got 30 Oh, it's a mid laner. Oh. Yeah. Got juked again. That's what the assassin mode's really all about. Plugo's definitely had a hard time in this. Um, and, you know, it's it's kind of curious because he's the mid laner, but he's clearly not quite as comfortable on these types of champions. We know he likes you know, the victors. Uh, clearly, the Rise works in his wheelhouse, too, but assassins are a different beast. He's more of a control mage player. Um, He's excited to come to this tournament. It's funny, because Latin America South, they scrim with the Brazilian teams. And so you can definitely see how that's certainly not inflated their performance, but kind of trained them up to aspire to well, they this. They beat them out just barely to get it, to get in this spot, too. <laughs> this is this is unfortunate. Oh, Tussle's incoming. And they do not see Evi. Oh, he knows that okay. at least one person's there. There you go. He's not going to take the one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, golf clap. Give him that. Well done. Well played. And, I mean, that's kind of his job right now. Plugo's just trying to stay alive a little bit longer. You can see his buys kind of designate that he will be going for the Abyssal Scepter. He has to build an offensive item, but it starts, of course, with the Negatron Cloak. Well, Plugo is going for his armor build. Again, you were juked again by the, the itemization because he is facing across from the Pantheon, so the MR wouldn't mean much for him. Yeah, I keep I keep getting juked. I know, I'm you like, keep minute, looking at Ari. I was like, the Negatron Cloak's really not going to yeah, help him. It's, no, not it's there. Fine. But uh, the Seeker's Arm Guard for Plugo, so he'll be able to get his... He'll be able to get his hourglass soon enough. And, you know, when the team fights start happening, that's when the things really get crazy. But LGL still on the offensive right now. And Plugo's actually found Tussle in the jungle, trying to get desperately back to his base. Can he do it? Leave yes, Plugo alone. Power. He's just trying to farm. Saros is going to get caught up by Wara. He's actually had the jump on in this game. Wara's looking really good. Uh, well, the top side of the map is completely won for Japan. Again, that's another massive wave that's just been pulled away from Plugo. He is hemorrhaging on experience as well as uh, CS gold. So this poor Diana is in a very sad state of affairs. The one caveat is that Diana actually has a really cost-efficient build path and a very flexible build path. So he'll still be relevant coming into late game, but we're not going to see, you know, the Saros Diana that was two-shotting people coming out of Plugo on the top side. Yeah, Saros, uh, he gets fed on that. Nocturne, we might see some of that oh happen no. to him, but Heredi just gets shredded. 
able to flash away at the last second, and Kledos is coming down too, so they're really focusing their energies on this bottom side of the map. And they can try to uh, push this tower down, because Wara also has the jump on mid lane. Saros is not working with a ton of mana, so this Nocturne really can't contribute to anything if this LeBlanc decides to mosey down there. Yeah, the chains are going to land too. He's able to get a little bit more chip damage. The Shadow Orb comes in, and there's a big wave building. As you said, Dara is all alone. Tussle is going to come to the rescue, but that's a lot of damage on the tower. And time and time again, LJL have proven that when it comes to toe-to-toe -to -toe mechanics, they are superior. But Latin America South are just making the smarter decisions across the map. There we go. Now they're pulling Wara. They won't take the tower down, but it's just above 50%, and that does mean a lot. Yeah, and Evie's going to have to come down to this mid lane right now to try and make a play because they realize that Lugos is not a threat. Uh, he's going to just come back up to the top. Okay, the Grand Sky will see. That's why you pick it, Frost. But Flugo's going to die, it looks like. This is not looking great. He's taking tower, however. To the can Lugo get the outplay? He flashes and he blocks it. Woo, buddy. Definitely was the stun, but hold on. Wara's trying to make redemption. Can Evie get back in time? He should oh, be fine. Oh, he needs to move fast. Evie is going to finish the job, and he gets away with it while Wara's still hunting to no avail. Unlucky. Whew. Okay, two kills to Japan in nine minutes. It's definitely been a much slower affair than we saw the assassins of the day before yesterday, if you will. Hold on, bot lane. Total control of LJL right now. Yeah. There's four members down there, especially Saros rotating. He's now got full mana. Oh god, Here comes Evie. This yeah. is a 5v5. Helior comes in and realizes this is not a good place to be. Bear is going to get shredded, and now they turn on to Dara, but Helior is isolated, but Plugo comes in to pick a kill himself. Let's see if he stays alive throughout this one. There are still four members of Team Fire closing in on him. Wara coming oh, up. Oh, Blugo! Nice pull in by Blugo, and Wara is coming up huge. Blugo is able to stay alive even through the minion damage. He gets the level up. You gotta be kidding me. Wara's not gonna be able to finish off Evie with some help from Plugo, and just like that, it's four to four. Plugo's mechanics? What mechanics? Flashes in, gets a displacement on four members under tower, stays alive, and turns that around for Latin America South. I take it all back, Plugo. That was amazing. That was the sickest moonfall I have ever seen. Let's see that one more time. Okay, so. LJL make a great decision here. Unfortunately, they don't juggle tower aggro the best between all of their members. And even more unfortunately is what Pluga is about to do next to them. Oh, come on, line Waiting up and, and flash. Boom. Oh, satisfying to watch. Then Mora comes in, hits the big AOE damage, and the tower is just doing so much work. And this is two times now that the LJL have been, been, have been punished for overstaying under a tower. And if Plugo had not leveled up there, <laughs> he would have died to minions. Hellier's and then just he like... wouldn't have been able to help finish. It's a, such a chain of events. It's so good. Oh, and here comes the Grand Skyfall out of Evi. Uh, that's going to prompt Bear to flash quickly into the charm, goes Evi, and Hellior's backed off now. Reset. We okay. should be fine. That's a lot of vision investment by the LJL. A lot of control wards, but they're cheap. Yeah. They're nice. Enough. We've now got a, a oh, different lane assignment. He's playing with some confidence. He Moonfalls back. Dar is going to try to escape. That's a support LeBlanc. That is a support LeBlanc, and that's not going to live much longer. Plugo can't finish the job, however. He's out of spell rotation. But he is starting to live large, and Kledos might be able to finish this kill. Goodbye. He's going to go in. Ults flashes Dara. He doesn't have his E because he used it to go over the wall. Dara, why? Nowhere to go, and Kledos takes a swipe out of him. Didn't want to gamble with the cooldown. Decided to try to juke him up. <laughs> Meanwhile, mid. Wara. He's able to nail Evi, but Saros is there. Okay, so difference between the damage. That is the mid lane LeBlanc versus the support LeBlanc that died top lane. And that was, I believe, a single chain as well as a sigil proc that almost half health Evi. So uh, War really showcasing why this champion is considered so high tier right now by a lot of professional players and streamers. Mm -hmm. Big thing for me, uh, for LeBlanc in particular, is how her wave clear was changed. Technically, yes, her burst damage was elongated over about five seconds uh, comparatively to what it was, but now she can proc multiple sigils. They have AOE ability on her Q, so she's got multiple ways to push waves. And do that. As well as just be terrifying under tower as usual. Yeah, Saros, this Nocturne pick, we definitely weren't quite expecting that, and it, I don't think he's been expecting the punishment he's been receiving as Tussle now might find himself under fire from Kledos and Bear, but no. 
They go in for a roam and they come right back out. Well, the problem is, is they need to unlock Saros from that lane so uh -oh. he can abuse the lack of vision on this map and start using that Nocturne ultimate effectively. But across from LeBlanc, he should spend all of his time under tower. The problem with LeBlanc and why she's always going to be powerful are her trade patterns. The fact that she can uh, put massive amounts of damage on you and the creeps at the same time. There's no, you know, clever choices to be made on that champion. Plugo is pulling Evian once again. He's able to block quite a few shots, one from the tower, but Plugo is still confident to chase him down and push him off. Tussle might have to tag in. The problem is, is that Plugo got so much gold from the assist as well as the occasional kill from that initial bottom dive. So all of the work that Japan had done topside putting him down has been almost completely reversed. And we're getting to that point where Diana has her armor, so the Kha'Zix and the Pantheon are losing their grip on her up top. And they're not closing the net right now. Evi is going to back away, which means, or stopping his back. Okay, they're still trying to pick this. It's still a dangerous situation if she can get underneath the tower. So they need to kill her before she gets there. Uh-oh, starting to run back. Now realizes something is up. Goes straight for the river. And uh, the Clone Blanc just goes right by. Plugo looks for Evi to see if he can finish the kill, but no. The 2v1 was just too strong as Saros takes a few pot shots on his way up to mid. Good catch from Saras, however, to make sure that Wara isn't leaving the mid lane and contributing to the top. Wara just, he sees Dara come in and rather than trying to dump a couple spells on him, he just keeps farming. Support LeBlanc. He's Not there for the threat. CC. All right, now it's an Ari battle in the bottom. Saros trying to keep his mid lane alive. And I believe to circumvent the uh, health, because again, in this mode, you must build items that have uh, AP or AD in finals. But that counts as an item that will work towards the spooky ghosts. Exactly. He's. Uh oh. Wara. Okay, it's going to be a three on one, and Evi shoves the spear in him. But let's go back to spooky ghosts. It's if he's going to get the spooky ghosts or if he's just going to sit on the components of it. Or if he's going to upgrade it into the. Uh, what is it? Watchers? I believe yeah, he has to upgrade it as far as the next item, because you're not allowed to build a defensive item unless you you're next You can't complete buy. a defensive item, but yeah. you can actually sit on a variety bucket of just pseudo-tanky items or uncompleted tanky items. What a loophole. <laughs> These guys. I'm just going to build all giant belts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was working on a Rylize. Come on. Don't do that. It's not cost efficient. No, that was not. an actual <laughs> advice for assassin mode. Don't build all giant belts. Frost told me it was OK. All right, Tussle's going to hop his way over and, and pick up a dragon here. Helior has turned mid, and Cirrus is having a hard time, but he gets the chase on right now because, well, he thinks he's got allies coming, but it's actually back up from Latin America South as Tussle's preoccupied with the dragon. Heredi going up, and now it looks like Latin America South want to pick this tower finally. Get themselves first tower blood, but there's a teleport on. They could just rush it, but Plugo's interrupted the TP! And with the t teleport not coming in, that will give Latin America South a go-ahead to push it down. I don't know if the TP was going to be the primary deterrent anyway. Pluko just stops. Here comes. You can't kill me. Oh, Kletos was heading up top, now going back mid. But still, Latin America South, you know, strong macro grip on the game, as well as the map. And it is going to be the Eye of the Watcher upgrade from Dara. I was going to say, he has to go Eye of the Watcher. He can't go Ruby Sidestone. Yep. doesn't have any AP or AD on the uh, item. Would not be allowed. Wara is waiting, seeing if he can get a cheeky pick. And he looks to target Heredi, but backs away when the chains start coming out. 2v1, that was ballsy. He's got Bear and Helior waiting in the wings, but they're going to back away and move to mid. And everything should be calm. Uh, with the Dragon cooldown down, it seems like LJL feel confident that they just want to continue to sit in their lanes and farm out. No one's sitting up too many traps are making any sort of crap or cross map rotations right now. Yeah, we talked about the assassin mode meta kind of evolving in terms of champion choices, but what's really nice to see is a much more controlled style from both these teams over the last days, the last since the last time they met, where it was a lot more chaos, a lot more action left and right all the time, which is great, don't get me wrong, but this is very smart objective-based play from both teams. Plugo Firing away at the tower up top. He's going to take him a little while, but there's no one there to stop him. Evie does have his ultimate, so he can get there. Saros also has it. his ultimate. Yeah, but what he doesn't know is that Kletos is here. So Plugo, oh, there's a TP coming in as well, and they're going to turn right on to Evie, who's got to burn his flash, and Plugo keeps going, goes golden, takes down Evie, and in comes Saros, who finishes him off. He even burns his flash. Oh. Wara. Okay, that was bold. 
Okay, so a trap finally was set up, and as I talk about that, meanwhile... Oh, Dara is going a little low. Heliar should be able to find him if the chains don't finish the job for Flash. The auto, not enough! And he burns his Flash to get away. Oh, boy. <laughs> Literally escapes the sliver of health. See if these two can escape. Yeah, He's gonna take it. They're in some trouble right now. War is just gonna try to misdirect. He does, and in comes Tussle. Oh, they blue smite him down. War has got the chains, and they finish the job. Tussle. Teleport. In comes Plugo. They're tagging in. Ciros is in some trouble now. Who is catching who? He pulls him in. Moonfall. Heliar is incoming. The orb will bounce. It'll take the damage. Foxfire. Everything is on him, but it's not enough. Excellent spell shield there. Oh, oh, no! oh Ceros is still alive. He's got vision. And he's got help. Just take the tower, boys. Evie, don't do it. It's not worth it, Evie. Evie. Uh, he's going to try. I mean, got to give him props for being a man. But right now, he might be regretting this. He does have backup Dara, but Dara just doesn't have the damage. Plugo kiting away. Still on the run. The orb comes in, and they are going to back off this time around. Yes, with Kratos uh, taking the recall back, it does signal that Latin America South are, we're done. We thought this was a good idea the first four times we went up top lane, but we're fine now. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this Assassin's Creed. Okay, so <laughs> it's a trap set up into a trap trap. This is the double trap card. Uh, Latin America South have Kratos waiting in the wings, but surprise, Saros is also making his way up through the river. He's like, what? It's a double trap? No one expects it. No one expects the trap <laughs> trap. <laughs> Definitely not. Seven to seven in kills. We're very close to even, but the LJL have that slim lead. And... Dara, bless his heart, keeps trying to find picks, but he doesn't have damage. I'm repeatedly told that Dara has done, uh, at least three minutes ago, about 40% of his team's damage from support LeBlanc. You're serious? Yeah, I, I literally pushed back into my producer. I was like, how is that possible? I don't even understand, but this is why I don't do math. On the broadcast, as Plugo gets taken down before he tried to tag in. Kratos looks to try and hunt down Evi, but to no avail, that and now here comes Dara. There's that 40%. You're gone as well. Uh, bye, Kratos. Oh, that was nasty. Oh, no. And in comes the man drop. Bear finds Tussle, but who is finding who? Support Pantheon not looking so hot right now, but they do take down Evie and Juarez tag his way in. These guys just keep taking these fights. These odds are crazy. They're high-fiving into death. I was just about to say, just the... Uh the controversial run in one at a time into five people and see how it works out strategy not paying off for Latin America South. Yeah, at least Heliar didn't fully commit to that and Flugo's coming back up. The charm does not land, but now you can see LGL just, knocking down towers up top. He's just trying to thin the uh, creep wave as best as possible, but this is a huge swing of power for the LJL. The fact that they picked up all of that kill gold straight into their back pockets as well as two towers to snowball them ahead. What was a very slim margin between these teams has now ballooned to close to 5k. Yeah, and just look at how things all kind of began here with Plugo just saying, that's okay, I can deal with the Pantheon. But he didn't realize that Tussle was right behind. And there is no real rhyme and reason to any of the continuous fights that we've had about top lane. It makes a bit more sense for Japan right now simply because that tower is so low. But this has been the story of just using as uh, many global ultimates as possible to get up top lane. But after this is all said and done, look at what's happening now in the picture-in-picture picture in the bottom of your screen. The Baron is being fought over. Evie tries to interrupt. It's such a quick pickup by Latin America South to try and force this issue. And unfortunately for them, they're not able to make it happen. And the spikes just keep on punishing Wara, who's going to have to jump over the pit. Takes a few parting shots as well, but they did manage to grab Evi, so at least they got something for their troubles. But you can understand the mentality here. Uh, they had a window knowing that Japan had reset their positioning after taking the top inner turret. So they wanted to rush the Baron on that tiny window while Japan are in their base and trying to get back on to Summoner's Rift. Back on to Summoner's Rift. Tussle is going to find himself another dragon. Not sure how useful the Ocean Drakes are uh, because it's out of combat regeneration, and we've seen a lot of combat. It's actually super useful because we've seen them yeah, running really across sad. maps to get involved, so that region is going to be actually very relevant. They don't have time. I was to trying be to be cheeky. Base. You blew my cover. No, I got you. Yeah, okay, it's good. It's fine, Power. We've <laughs> known each other a long time. This is, this is very true. It's nice to be back casting with you again, Frost. Let's take a look. I That's thought I got away from you <laughs> in Australia. <laughs> we brought you back to Barcelona. <laughs> All right. So, let him south. How far do I need to go? <laughs> to the end of the earth. I love you, Fire. I love you, too. Uh, there's a lot of vision still being invested for Team Fire right now, and you can see it kind of spread across the map. And 
The Dragon Regen gonna help out for the LGL. Latin America South, however, they still are keeping relevant. It's just that big fight that they kept high-fiving their way in that they, they put them so far behind on gold right now. But, but these can... guys turn objectives fast. And you can see what they want, and they want the Baron. Um, the problem is, is that, you know, the Death said it best. When it comes to these 5v5s, when it comes to these 3v3s, Japan, you know, has shown that they're the better team at it. The last time we were in Assassin mode, they won. They've now got Hellier. Yep, and he is just caught between Goodbye. a rock and a hard place. Tussle finishes him off, gets the reset jump, but Kletos is going to be jumping away himself. Now Bear is being chased down, and it's all on the retreat path. Teleport coming in for Diana. Will they last long enough? They find Dara. Kletos picks him up, and now Kletos running scared. Double kill over to Tussle in the meantime. Or I should say, Kletos, Plugo coming in. Wara, they're going to get the pole in, but they flash out, and Plugo, he gets juked by his own team. Goes in, goes golden. Wara's not going to give him any help. He flashes, he dies already. Picks him up. 14 to 10, and the LGL keep on rolling. But Wara is still alive and hanging around in the area to deter any sort of Baron. Meanwhile, Saras has pushed his way through one tower and is looking for another one. Everyone's backed away, though, from Latin America South. Everyone that stayed alive, rather. And in comes Kledos. Siros, he may have been huge last time around, but this is a very different story. This game, it has all been about Heredi, Tussle, and Evie. But he's still very relevant to uh, Japan's strategy, although, hold on, deep teleport from behind Baron. Very far. They're not going to save this tower with that. Tower goes down. Brown Skyfall's coming in. He's still going in. Wara really wants this fight, and he's going to finally have to realize that he cannot take it. So they burn a lot of summoners, a lot of ultimates, and LGL get out with a tower. And there's no response here as we now take a, another look at Hellier. So, unfortunately, he's just pushed way too far forward, not having vision on his flanks. And just the CC chain comes through to blow him up. Um, from there, it's a good job by Wara to stay alive long enough, as well as chip enough at health from these uh, from Team Fire to make sure that they can't immediately turn into the Baron. What's cool here is you can actually see the communication between Plugo and Wara. So Plugo has the opportunity that he could just actually exit the fight, but he continuously is going back in and stalling them, trying to set his team up to say, okay, are we coming in for another round of burst? Yeah, it's a little difficult when you're dealing with all those mob Malmordiuses, and in the end, LGL is still able to eke out the fight win. Tussle was big. Kledos, though, he really made the, that fight close enough to work at this point. And you take a look at how the gold swung this time around. It's finally going much more in favor of the LGL, but it has not been a smooth path by any means. Again, it was really the top lane skirmishes that continuously were just hammered through by Japan, giving them two towers and so much control and pressure on this map. And again, it's even more, it's always punishing in a normal 5v5 game, but even more so in the assassin mode because you don't have any wards. Like, there's one sight stone, it's now Eye of the Watcher on this entire map. So when you lose that much control of pressure, you can't see anything. Yeah, and speaking of not being able to see anything at all, Laura, he's gone gold after the Nocturne and popped right on in, and Kledos is backing away. Bear is going to be sacrificed. It looks like Dara goes for the chase. Blugo is able to pull them all back, however, he gives his life. And it's low health bars for the LJL, but in comes Wara. Can he finish it? No, he cannot. And that's the problem, is that Wara wasn't there when Plugo was tanking up all the damage and finding the CC. They didn't have anything to layer after it. So, misplaced fight. Latin America South continuously getting punished by Japan's superior 5v5. Shining through hugely this time around, and it may not be the same dominating fashion, but the LGL are pulling ahead once again in Assassin. Mabwara is looking to try and pick off Saros, who sidesteps the chains. Flashy play, and now they're on the retreat path. Again, we've seen it. Take the tower, leave. Do not need to keep fighting this one when you have low health bars, and they get away with it. And it's cute, the interactions between Nocturne and LeBlanc right now in terms of who's going to get the chain. Uh, or the CC off on the chain versus the CC off on the heel, and oh god. Uh-oh, right into the blind spot, and Heliar is sent back to Fountain, the express route. Kledos now has nothing left in the tank. Tussle will take a swipe to finish him off, and they ping straight for Baron. Tussle is even going to look to steal away the red buff, and he does manage to get it. And that's what I was talking about. Uh, you're against assassins, you have no vision, it's more punishing than ever before. Wara is pretty much their only ho hope right now. And Bear just grabs a ward, but there's not much you can do about it. The control ward's gonna be cleared away. Dara is even Wara's blocking. In the pit. Wara goes into the pit, but he's finished off by Heredi. They grab the dragon and some dessert on top of it. Three members dead on Latin America South. The LGL with a Baron buff now at 27 minutes. And the shoe is completely on the other foot between game one and game two. Japan looking far more comfortable when it comes to these skirmishes and these fights and taking down Latin America. Yeah. 
They got beat in the 5v5, and they turn around, well, this is our wheelhouse. This is what we're going to do. And it's looking like we are heading to the 1v1s for sure. We're going to have fun. We're going to play Nocturne. Yeah. And, you know, Seros wasn't massively carrying this game, but he's definitely proved his worth and clutch use of the paranoia. Let's take a look, though, at the other lack of vision. He just, he had so many abilities to check that push. Yeah, the charm, he had a Q, you could have thrown a little chain in there. I mean, Heliard just, but one moment he was there, and then... To check it with your teeth. Yeah, not a good idea. Baron gets shredded pretty fast, and now there's gonna be another Ocean Drake taken on the side of the LGL, so they have even more regen. It came in really handy that last time because they're just barely winning these fights, and they can walk away, and they're healthy again. Triple like Ocean. Oh, hello. In goes Saros. Instant exhaust on a bear. That's fine, though. They've done the job. They pushed them back. They have Baron empowered minions on the way. It is a bit scary to see how well they're se uh, they will siege. Again, if we're talking about the meta of assassin mode, uh, these compositions are really reliant on Baron just because they don't have an AD carry. So need help pushing down these structures unless they want to look for a dive, which without Saros having his ultimate, probably a no-go. Yeah, for Latin America South, the game plan just seems to be try to wait it and bait it out. But Team Fire playing way too comfortably at the moment. War looks like he's going to go for a pick onto Saros, but he needs that is to be... a two-level disadvantage. He's also playing around the spell shield. Again, the micro interactions between, or the micro interaction windows between the spell shield, the fear, as well as the chain and LeBlanc's big distortion damage are very cute. Who's going to come out on top in that matchup? Yep. Now they're slowly losing damage on the turret. Tussle. The Evolved Spikes keeps on sending out the AoE damage. Dara keeps on chasing them away, and they're just getting chipped down, just like this tower. Right up to top. Wash, rinse, repeat. And this one's uncontested at the moment. There's a bigger minion wave. Tussle is scaring them all the way back to base, and that is a very quick tower tank. Should be the inhibitor as well. We'll see if they're able to get more. They do have an inside track with Dara here. Yep. Powering those minions right in the mid and go down to the bottom if they want to do it as well. And it seems like Latin America South are running out of options in this game. A few more Baron Empowered minions. They've had a hard time finishing this particular tower, but it looks like it might be about to change. And they can once again go back down to the bottom lane. Latin America South had a brief, very brief reprieve. At this point, they're just trying to retain as many inhibitors as possible. Uh, best case for the scenario for them is to not lose any, but obviously losing one, especially the top one, isn't going to be the end of the world. But they cannot afford to lose another one. Yeah. We're 30 minutes into this game, and it's starting to look very, very, very grim as Saros gets nailed by the charm, and he just doesn't care. Another tower is going to fall. Seems like these side waves are much harder to defend as Evie has found Heliar, and they chunk him down to half health and some change. Kleidos can't get involved. Wara is going to get dove on by Tussle, but Blugo is going to try to make the hero play as he goes golden. And Dara is going to go down. Bear will finish him off, but the rest of Latin America South are getting ripped to shreds. A double kill for a tussle. Another inhibitor is going to fall. He hops over the pit, and he's chasing Kleidos away from his own base. And unfortunately for them, that will be the Baron inhibitor that falls down. So LJL can just play this one out rather methodically, continue to shove these super creep waves into the two open lanes, and then just play around the Baron again. They know where he is. Kleidos isn't getting away from this one. Or is he? I was wrong. It's not necessarily worth killing him. No, but it would look good. Well, let's take a look at it once again. Started on the bottom, and then Helior. I think it's got. Uh, so the, the supports are actually going to trade their health bars here. Uh, Bear is going to dive down onto the back, and he will clean up Daria. But unfortunately, the problem is, is that when Plugo and Kletos finally go in with Bear, Wara uh, is back on Nexus spawn right now. He's healing up. So again, there's all of this CC, and there's all of your tank line going in, but there's no one to follow that up. As much of a tank line as you can have in this game mode, it just hasn't been enough damage for them. And now, Latin America South are desperately trying to keep their base clean of enemy minions. It's so weird to call it a tank line in assassin mode. Yeah. Relatively speaking, they're tanks. False tank Diana. <laughs> and false tank bear. Yeah. Uh, you would think bears are pretty tanky. He's got a black cleaver, though. It's an ice bear. Ice bear. Rawr. It's a good ice bear impression. I work on it every day. I'm glad it's shown. All right. So back to the siege goes Team Fire, but they have no more Baron. There's two minutes before that'll respawn. They may not need it as much, though, because they keep chipping away. It's just 
a matter of time it's before those minions keep on simply shoving. that there's nothing else available on the map for them. That's why they're here. Oh, well, there might be kills. Wara is just getting demolished. Tussle, he's not even afraid anymore. There's a flash, the Grand Skyfall. Look at the AoE they're dishing at Tussle. It's a godlike kill. Saros on a rampage. That's a triple kill for Nocturne. And they might as well just give him the Quadra at this point. Boom, it's a double for Tussle. And that's going to be the ace. That's going to be GG. 32 and a half minutes in. The LJL will equalize. And guess what, Frostgurin? We're going to the 1v1s. We're going to the shootout. And I wish I could tell you what happened in that last team fight. And the only thing I can say is Scumbag Tussle denies the pentakill from mid lane Nocturne on Saros. That's OK. He had a pretty good game at the end of it all. And what a big victory for the LJL. They will force it all the way to the final.